Ever wondered about the mysteries that lie beyond our everyday reality? Ever pondered over black magic, magic in general, or the evil eye? These enigmas have intrigued humanity for centuries, stirring our curiosity and fear in equal measure. From the far reaches of the East to the West, varied beliefs and traditions surround these mystical phenomena. Some dismiss them as mere superstition while others consider them real and potent forces. In the midst of these diverse perspectives, there's a rich tapestry of understanding within a particular faith. Shia Islam. This sect of Islam, deeply rooted in the wisdom of the Imams of al al bayt provides unique insights into these phenomena. Over the course of this video we'll explore these mystical elements from the Shia perspective, their roots in Islamic teachings, and the guidance provided by the Imams. In the next few minutes we'll delve into how these phenomena are understood in Shia Islam. Black magic known as seer is acknowledged in Shia Islam, yet it's considered forbidden and harmful. In the Shia tradition the existence of black magic isn't just an abstract concept, but a reality that believers are encouraged to guard against. This belief is grounded in Islamic teachings and the guidance provided by the Imams of al al bayt While there may not be specific hadiths addressing black magic directly, general principles from Islamic teachings including Shia sources can be applied to understand this phenomenon. One such teaching comes from Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, who said, Whenever a servant prostrates to Allah, Allah elevates him a degree and forgives him a sin, so perform many prostrations. This hadith emphasizes the importance of regular prayer as a means of seeking divine protection. Black magic is seen as a harmful force and thus, believers are encouraged to seek refuge in Allah from its effects. This can be done through the recitation of protective verses from the Holy Quran, or by maintaining a consistent prayer routine. It's also recommended to maintain a deep connection with God through acts of worship and devotion. The concept of magic in general is viewed with disapproval in Shia Islam. It's considered a form of polytheism which is strictly discouraged. As Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, peace be upon him, advised, Do not engage in magic for it represents polytheism and Allah disapproves of polytheism. Protection against black magic and indeed all forms of harmful magic is an integral part of the Shia faith. This protection comes from seeking refuge in Allah, reciting specific verses from the Quran, and maintaining a strong, sincere connection with God. So the antidote to black magic in Shia Islam revolves around faith, prayer, and seeking divine protection. By adhering to these principles, Shia Muslims believe they can safeguard themselves against the harmful effects of black magic and other negative influences. It's a testament to the power of faith, the strength of prayer, and the protective grace of the divine. The domain of magic regardless of its color or intent, is generally frowned upon in Islamic teachings. Now let's delve into this topic a bit more. Magic in all its forms is a concept that's typically condemned in Islam. This includes both black magic or seer, and other forms that might not be as clearly defined. The Islamic stance on magic is not one of intrigue or fascination but rather one of caution and avoidance. The teachings of Shia Islam in particular direct followers to steer clear of magic and all its associated practices. This is not merely a suggestion but an explicit warning, given the potential harm and spiritual deviation that magic can cause. Now, you might ask, what about the magic we see in movies or read about in fantasy novels? The magic we're discussing here is not the fictional kind you'd find in a Harry Potter book. Rather, we're talking about practices that attempt to manipulate the natural order of things, often for personal gain or to harm others. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, one of the respected Imams of al al bayt had this to say about magic. Do not engage in magic, for it represents polytheism, and Allah disapproves of polytheism. This statement underscores the gravity of dabbling in magic, equating it to polytheism, which is a serious offense in Islam. So how does one protect oneself from the potential harm of magic? The answer lies in a strong connection with Allah, regularly reciting protective verses seeking refuge in Allah and maintaining a robust prayer schedule are key. These practices not only provide a shield against harmful influences, they also strengthen one's spiritual resolve and connection with God. Remember the goal is not to live in fear of magic, but to understand its nature as outlined by Islamic teachings and to seek protection in the right places. Magic in any form is seen as a deviation from the right path, and the best protection against such deviation is a strong connection with Allah, bolstered by sincere worship and prayer. In essence, dabbling in magic is a no-go in Shia Islam, and protection lies in prayer and divine connection. 
Opening the evil eye or al -ain is another phenomenon that is recognized and taken seriously in Shia Islam. In the realm of the unseen, the evil eye holds a prominent place. It's a concept rooted deeply not just in Islamic tradition, but also in various cultures around the world. The evil eye is believed to be a harmful force that can affect both individuals and their possessions. It's not a physical object or a tangible thing, but rather a negative energy or a harmful intent that's projected outwards, often stemming from envy or malice. In Shia Islam, it's believed that this negative energy can cause real harm, from physical illness to sudden misfortune. Now this might sound a bit daunting, but it's important to remember that Islam also provides us with ways to protect ourselves from such harm. Protection from the evil eye, much like with black magic, involves seeking refuge in Allah. Reciting specific verses from the Quran is one of the primary ways to guard against it. Verses like Ayat al-Kursi and Surah al-Falaq and Surah An-Nas are often recommended for this purpose. These verses contain powerful affirmations of God's protection, providing a spiritual shield against negative influences. Another crucial point is to maintain a humble attitude. In Islamic teachings humility is highly valued. It's a way of acknowledging that all blessings come from Allah, reducing the chance of attracting the evil eye. Remember the evil eye is often associated with envy, so a humble demeanor can serve as a deterrent. Imam Muhammad al-Bakir, one of the revered imams in Shia Islam once said, The evil eye is true, and if anything were to overtake divine decree, it would be the evil eye. This highlights the significance of the evil eye in Islamic thought, but we should not let this concern overshadow the power of faith. It's through sincere belief, humble living, and seeking refuge in Allah that we can shield ourselves from such harm. Closing. The evil eye is indeed a concern, but the shield against it is faith, humility, and divine refuge. So, how does one overcome these mystical challenges in Shia Islam? In the face of such mystical trials as the evil eye and magic, Shia Islam offers a variety of practices that can help one seek refuge and protection. These are not just rituals, but ways to fortify one's faith and connection with the divine. First and foremost is the recitation of Quranic verses. The power of the Quran is considered a divine shield against negative influences. Verses like Ayat al-Kursi, Surah al-Falaq and Surah an-Nas are often recited for protection. These verses, steeped in profound wisdom, serve as a spiritual armor, providing solace and strength. Next is the practice of dua or supplication. This involves seeking refuge in Allah through specific prayers. Dua al-Mashlul, for instance, is a supplication that's often recommended. It's not just about uttering the words but about sincere invocation, about pouring one's heart into seeking divine help and protection. Moreover, establishing regular prayers or salat is considered fundamental. It's through these prayers that we maintain a strong connection with Allah. As Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib states, Whenever a servant prostrates to Allah, Allah elevates him a degree and forgives him a sin. This shows the transformative power of prayer in warding off harmful influences. Lastly, some Shia Muslims embrace the practice of wearing protective talismans, or tawiz. These are small pieces of paper containing Quranic verses and supplications, carried as a form of protection. While these practices are part of the Shia tradition, it's important to seek guidance from knowledgeable religious authorities for specific situations and concerns. Ultimately, overcoming these mystical challenges is about more than just rituals. It's about a strong reliance on faith, sincerity and worship, and the avoidance of sinful actions. Protection then, is a blend of faith, sincere worship, and the power of Quranic verses and supplications. In the end it's clear that Shia Islam recognizes these mystical phenomena, yet offers a spiritual arsenal to combat them. We've delved into the beliefs about black magic, magic in general, and the evil eye in Shia Islam. We've understood that these are seen as negative forces, but there are ways to safeguard against them. Shia teachings emphasize the importance of seeking refuge in Allah, reciting protective verses, performing regular prayers, and maintaining a humble attitude. There are practices like recitation of Quranic verses, supplication, regular prayers, and even wearing protective talismans that are recommended for protection. However, it's crucial not to forget that these practices are to be coupled with a strong faith, sincerity in worship, and avoidance of sinful actions. And for specific situations and concerns, guidance from knowledgeable religious authorities is always advised. Remember, in Shia Islam, the power to overcome these challenges lies not in fear but in faith. Stay blessed.